So we're going to take advantage of using separation of variables because you might have noticed here we have psi as a function of theta and phi. So in my separation of variables, I've got my um, theta component right here. So I'm going to say, you know, a function uh, theta. I just used a capital theta and a lowercase theta. And then our function phi, a capital phi and a lowercase phi. Okay, so those are our separation of variables. Um, so what we know is that our Schrodinger equation um, is given right here with just our kinetic energy operator. And we've also got our Legendre. So now putting this together, okay, I'm going to go ahead and um, first uh, put my Schrodinger equation um, in a form that I can use. Um, so the first thing that I'm going to do is the following here. I'm going to say, uh, I'm going to write up here, I'll write Legendre squared psi of theta phi um, equals negative 2ie divided by h bar squared times a psi of theta and phi. And so now, uh, right, so I just moved all the constants over. Um, and now what I'm going to do is apply the separation of variables, and I'm also going to plug in all of these terms for the Legendre. Okay? So that's going to go as the following. I'm going to start way over here and hope that I left myself enough room. Okay, so I'm going to start with that 1 over sine squared term. 1 over sine squared of theta, and now partial derivative of phi. Okay, so I'm going to write the partial squared of theta of theta and phi of phi. And this is only the partial derivative in phi. Okay, right? So um, psi is theta, theta, phi, phi. Okay, so now my next term is this plus 1 over sine of theta. And then now I've got a first derivative in theta. Okay, so let's see where that all went. Um, oh, and what I'm also going to do to make this, um, oh yeah, I'm just going to write it uh, as such. Okay, so partial of theta, theta, I'll just make sure I stay consistent here. Okay, we use little serifs to note that that's um, capital Phi. Okay, partial in theta. And then now that's times a sine theta. And then once again, another derivative, okay? So I'm looking at my notes here and I'm trying to figure out what I did differently because I've got two derivatives written there. Why did I do that? Okay, well, we're just going to go for it. We're just going to write it. And we're going to see what happens. Phi partial theta. And all of this, so equals negative 2ie divided by h bar squared times, of course, my wave functions that have now been separated. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is pull out all of the functions that don't have dependencies. So for example, here is derivative in phi. So I don't need to worry about the theta when I'm taking the derivative in phi. So I'm going to write that out here, okay, divided by sine squared of theta. And then now I've got my partial derivative in phi of just phi. Okay, great. Um, and then now I can do the same thing here for this derivative. Okay, and what I'm going to do here is collect like terms. So I'm going to factor out um, that derivative. You'll see here in a second 
Um, I'm just going to write it all out, and then I'll describe what happened. Okay? So sine theta, and then now this is just partial of theta, and then yes, very good, my theta function. Okay? Um, aha! So I know why I'm confusing myself, because this is this term here only applies to the sine of theta. So that is why I confused myself earlier. So that means I don't need to have um, this in here. I knew I was confusing myself somehow. Okay. Right. So this is just, you know, order of operation, right? Partial of phi operates on sine of theta. Okay. So that means that I have up here phi divided by sine of theta, partial of theta. Okay. And then now I need a sine. Yes. Okay. Right. The partial of theta of sine of theta. Okay, brilliant. And then now what I can write out here, so I've only needed to factor out this phi right here. And so now that's going to become partial of theta times theta. And of course, all of that still equals this. I'm not going to rewrite that um, part of the equation. This all still equals this side. And now what I can do is divide and conquer. So I'm going to divide both sides by this wave function, theta, theta, phi, phi. Okay? So when I do that, when I divide this out, okay, check this out. The theta term is going to cancel. All right? Um, but I'm still going to end up with a 1 over phi. Let's rewrite that again here. Okay. So, uh, and excuse me, so let's write that as um, I'm going to end up with a 1 over sine squared of theta times. And so now I'm dividing this whole term by theta phi. So the theta cancels and now I just have 1 over phi. Okay. And then I still have my derivative in phi. I can't cancel that out. Okay. And then now I can say plus. All right. And so now I'm going to have a 1 over uh, sine theta. And my phi cancels. So I'm going to also have a 1 over theta function. Okay, and then now I'm going to have a partial of theta. It blanked out on me. This is going to be interesting on the um, recording. In any event, so now I've got the partial of theta sine theta. Okay, um, and then now I have, um, yes, brilliant. I still have my function right here, partial of theta of theta. Okay. Um, and then now what I did, um, I'm going to add this part over so we can set all of this equal to zero. And of course the theta and the phi have canceled. And so that all equals zero. And then now um, I think I left myself another page. Oh good, a whole another blank page. And so now I'm going to clean up some of this algebra by collecting some of these 1 over sines, okay? So I'm going to multiply everything through by sine squared of theta, 